to me, this is the final flush out in crypto that is now starting. We're close to the bottom. Um, don't get discouraged by these big bearish headlines that come out. That's part of a market that is bottoming. Yeah, I, I think just, you know, just again, for me, I'm a very history, I'm a history buff. So I, not only just on, on world history, but also on stock and market history and asset history. And you have to look back at at, at Lehman Brothers. And, and in fact, let me show my chart here because I do think Please. it's worth kind of taking a look at. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin, joined by returning guest, friend of the channel, 20-year trading veteran, Gareth Soloway. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thank you so much. It's always good to be back and talk to you. Definitely, man. And we had a lot of fun in Dubai, hanging with you, the Kitco crew. Um, what's new since then? Not a whole lot. I mean, I, I mean, everything kind of like you said before we started the interview is different, but at the same time, it's the same, you know, uh, crypto still stuck in this bear market, bear winter type thing. Uh, we've obviously since Dubai, we've had the FTX collapse and that's just, you know, earth shattering. But at the same time, I know, I know this sounds weird, but it's like, it's almost like something that I wanted to see happen so that I knew that we were getting close to the end of the bear market. And again, it's not like it's tomorrow or next week, but this is the final, to me, this is the final flush out in crypto that is now starting. So I think that's the, you know, you always try to look at things on the positive side, at least I do. And I think that's the positive take here is that it's a horrendous situation, but this should be the final flush out of crypto before it bottoms. So last time we spoke in September, I believe, you and this was before the FTX collapse, you expected a further downside in Q4 as low as 11K. Mm -hmm. Right now we're hovering around 15, 16K. Yep. Did we play out like you thought or what surprised you besides FTX? Yeah, so I, I think it is playing out like like I thought. Um, I did have no idea that FTX was going to be a, you know the situation that it was. But what you find out is in bear markets, you know, it's essentially the tide goes out, or essentially the money stops. It dries up for all of these cryptos. Um, and you see who's wearing a bathing suit when that that tide goes out, right? So you know who's being shady, that's revealed, and then who's being legitimate that survives, and they're going to be the ones that thrive in the new bull market. So, so I think that's the key is that this happens. I mean, you could go back to two thousand and eight, Lehman Brothers. I mean, Lehman made some very poor bets. And it, it filed, filed for bankruptcy. It was kind of an earth shattering event back in 08. The markets took about six months from there to bottom. So that kind of gauges me um, where I'm saying, okay, I think with five or six months out from the FTX collapse, you likely reach a bottom in crypto. Now, whether that's 12,000 or 9,000, I'm a little shaky on that, but I do think that's the key. And then if we go back to like the dot com collapse, interestingly enough, you had. Enron uh, and WorldCom, right? And these were two companies that were doing very shady things with their accounting and their books and basically fabricating a lot of stuff, very similar to FTX. And when the bear market came there, they couldn't hide it anymore. And, and really, I mean, heck, you could even go back to Bernie Madoff, right? Bernie Madoff was continually you know, making his investors think they were just having amazing gains. But when the bear market hit, people started to pull their money out. So it couldn't continue the pyramid scheme, essentially. So, so I think that's kind of where we are. But again, the positive is I think we're five to six months out from a good official bottom in crypto. As we look at the charts, essentially what you're saying is this has extended the bear market a little bit. Some people were thinking the FTX collapse, man, it pushed everything to the forefront. We're getting it out of the way. It might shorten it. You think a little extension. Yeah, I, I think just, you know, just again, for me, I'm a very history, I'm a history buff. So I, not only just on, on world history, but also on stock and market history and asset history. And you have to look back at at, at Lehman Brothers. And, and in fact, let me show my chart here, because I do think Please. it's worth kind of taking a look at um, what the kind of play out was on the S&P 500. So what I'm going to do quickly is just scroll all the way back to 2008. And what we're going to see is that when Lehman Brothers announced, and we're almost there here, uh, let's see here, there we go. So 2008. So September 15th is when Lehman Brothers occurred. So it basically occurred right here. And, and what we saw was that initially you flushed and then you had a little bounce. And if you notice, Bitcoin is actually staging a little bit of a bounce the last few days. But then what happened was you had this kind of cascading sell-off that took us into the March lows. And from this date, this was March 
So, so, so basically September to March is approximately six months. And that again, makes me think that you still have some downside because there is deleveraging that will occur. And I think this is one of the things that a lot of newer investors don't understand is that you have companies out there that are involved. They had investments with FTX and now they're distressed. And what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to sell off assets to become less stressed. And so that's going to be Bitcoin holdings, Ethereum holdings, other coin holdings. And so you're going to have this kind of multi-month period where there's just going to be pressure on crypto in general because of the deleveraging that has to go on in the system. So I think that's what happened with Lehman Brothers. And you saw this kind of collapse. Now, what's fascinating is when the S&P bottomed in March 09, the Fed began quantitative easing. Now, the Fed is not going to do quantitative easing in this scenario, but that's okay because there's something else that will mark the bottom in crypto. And that, for me, is when you get a regulatory framework which creates transparency, right? And again, you know, you could argue whether you think the government will overregulate or not. They probably will slightly, but I think we all have to agree at this point, you have to have protections for regular investors where you can't have these scenarios continue to occur. Terra Luna, you know, Celsius, now obviously FTX, you need transparency. So you need some sort of regulation. So I think within five or six months, that's going to coordinate with the low in crypto. And once you get that regulatory framework, then big money is going to come in like crazy. I think there's a ton of big money that still says, I wish I could invest in Bitcoin, but I just can't because it's too risky, right? I can't wake up and I'm investing people's money, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a hedge fund. I'm investing $100 million in crypto. I can't do it if it's, there's a risk that it just vanishes tomorrow. Once you get regulation and transparency, you will see that money come in. And the other thing to point out on that chart of the S&P 500, not only was it a six-month time frame, but there was essentially a drop in the S&P of about 45% from the Lehman Brothers um, you know, breaking collapse story. And so what that does to me is I looked at it and I said, okay, from FTX, what would be a 45% drop in Bitcoin? And it's basically around 10,000 to 9,000. So that gives me a basis to where I think we could see that ultimate low. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But for me, it's all about looking at history and kind of matching things up. Wow. So you kind of just said 9, 10, 11K. That, I mean, you've been saying that for months now, but the FTX collapse uh, just solidifies it. Could you take us to the Bitcoin charts and essentially show us on chart what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's take a look here and let me show my charts again. And so essentially what we have here is you can see that this was the start of your, your FTX collapse. We kind of chopped here. We started to break down. You held this low, which short term is a positive, and we've bounced up. The one little, and this is very short term analysis right now. We'll get into the longer term. What you can see is you're basically just back to this kind of down sloping trend line. So this is your short term resistance. Now, if we get rid of that line and we go to a larger time frame, what I've been saying is, all right, so five to six months out, bottom on Bitcoin, and then ultimately 45% lower. Well, where does that put us? Well, let's take a look here and see if there's some other technical factors that match for that level. And what you could see is if you go back to 2017 before the run up, the bull market run in late 2017, and you put a trend line here, then connect it through the, the bear market lows of 2018 and 19, it, the trend line perfectly matches the COVID lows. And look at where we are. We're basically getting back to about 8,000. Now, you might say, well, 8,000 is lower than Garrett's you know, 9,000 low pivot. But if you look, this, this is an upsloping trend line. So in about six months, this should be approaching that 9,000-ish level or so. And this trend line would basically be a retrace to the long-term trend line of Bitcoin going back to really before the 2017 cycle. So this gives us another technical reason why you could easily see a chart you know, pullback in Bitcoin down to that level to form that bottom. There's, all, there's another one little thing here on the charts. Take this high connect it through these highs right here and look at that trend line. It also comes right there to that same level. So, so for me, it's, it's, and again, you know, I, I think it's Austin. It's one of, one of the important things to really understand is that for me, I'm a trader for 20 years, Bitcoin may not get down to 9,000 and I fully understand that. But for me in my, in my risk assessment, how I kind of allocate money, I have to be prepared for it to go down that low. So what have I done? Well, I have basically started to accumulate a HODL position on Bitcoin. I put 100K in Bitcoin already uh, in this general vicinity. 
And what I've decided to do is every 3000 down, I'll just put another 100K in. And I'm just going to be very robotic about that so that if Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin only goes to 12,000, at least I have some exposure if it starts to rip higher. If it goes down to 9,000 or let's say, hopefully not, but 6,000, I'll just continue to dollar cost average in. And I think that's the way that I want most investors to think about it because it's too hard, even for me, to pick an exact bottom. I mean, like, you know, that's like a one in a million thing. Like, yes, I called the top at 69,000, but in all fairness, I was calling it at around 65. So I wasn't exactly dead on. But again, that's that same sort of thing that you get close, you might not get exact. Gareth, I really love this perspective. Uh, the links for all your stuff are down below, as well as I want to have you back on later today. We're going to just talk about Ethereum, price targets for that, but just final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily Army. Yeah, so for the Altcoin Daily Army, and again, you guys are awesome out there, and I love I love the Altcoin Daily Brothers here. I mean, you guys do great, great work. Um, but I would just say this is that we're close to the bottom. Um, don't get discouraged by these big bearish headlines that come out. That's part of a market that is bottoming. So as you get more bearish sentiment out there, as people freak out more, try to separate yourself from that emotion and look at the facts. Is Bitcoin still a viable investment? Is the thesis still there? The answer is yes. In fact, once we get regulation, I truly believe you will have a ton of big money coming in. So you just now are looking and saying, okay, well, how do I carefully dip my toe in the water as it goes lower where I can withstand prices? Like if you're in it, 13,000, can you deal with it being at $9,000 or even 3,000 or 5,000? And so you want to allocate money properly so that you don't get whipped out if it does go lower than we all think. I think that's the key. So it's proper allocation, but the thesis is still there.